this we stay in this line and get halfway over. Get excited now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in singing the national anthem. Now, the pleasure to be here. <laughs> it just nerves. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the 
amazing experience. I mean, we have a country that's in trouble, and therefore it shouldn't be fun, but it's going to be fun because we are going to bring our country back. Remember that. And we've got politicians running that don't know what they're doing. We have politicians running that are totally controlled by special interests, by lobbyists. I'm self-funding my campaign, folks. So coming down, I told a statistician, get me the numbers on this area. Thank you very much. And I love you too. It's a guy, but I love him. I told my people, get me the numbers on the area, and I know Maryland for a long time, and I love it. I have so many friends over here. A lot of them are here today, David and my friends, my man, some very great people here. So here's what they came with. This is right out of the books, right? Few states have known Maryland's pain. Maryland has suffered because of what's going on with our country, because manufacturing is down 40%. 40%, think of that, since 2001. Now that happens to be when Congress voted to put China in the World Trade Organization. Not a good idea, folks. And now we're going with TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Cruz wants it, Kasich wants it. It's gonna be worse than NAFTA. You better not approve it, folks. You'll have the rest of the jobs taken, believe me. Like candy from a baby. Now this area, Hagerstown, which we all know and love, we do love it, right? Yeah. That's the good news. The bad news is your jobs are down 40%. We'll bring them back, okay? We're gonna bring them back. jobs in Maryland have disappeared since 1990. It's no good. We're going to change it. We're going to change it. Who needs those kind of stats? Get rid of them. I'll tell you what. If I win and if I become your president, you're going to see such a fast curve. And you know what? When companies move out of the United States and they leave Maryland and they leave all of the other places, you saw last week we had a record-setting victory in New York. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, like all of the dishonest, look at all those cameras back there. All of the dishonest media was saying, well, he won't be able to do it. And you know, what they don't say, and this is something so important, I never really wanted to talk about it because it seemed so obvious, but they never talk about it. When I started, we had 17 people, right? 17. And I then get on and I'd see these pundits who don't have the brains they were born with say, yes, Donald Trump had a conclusive victory, but he didn't break 50%. You can't break 50%. Abraham Lincoln could not break 50%. When you have 16 people in the early, you had 16, then you had 14, then you had 12, then you had nine, then you had seven, you had six, you had five, now we have three, okay? Let me just tell you. So despite all of that, I'm doing really well. We're leading in delegates by a lot. We don't care about second, third, fourth battle. You know, Cruz, this guy Cruz, Lion Ted Cruz, he's a liar like you've never seen. He is a liar like you've never seen. So in business, I deal with tougher people than him, but I've never dealt with a person that could lie like this guy, I'm telling you. Now, he's not a good liar because he gets caught, you know, a good liar. But I will tell you, you know, over the weekend and last week, my folks were meeting with the Republican National Committee, and they had a meeting, I don't know, you know, I, I said, are you, you want to do this? Do you want to actually go down and spend the money for an airplane ticket to go there? More liars. They went in Florida. By the way, they had boats and yachts waiting to take delegates around and everybody, boy, these delegates. I think I want to become a delegate. I want to <laughs> no, it's a crooked game. Folks, it's a rigged system, believe me. It's a rig. 
and I read, you probably read where Cruz is going, and he's whining and dining and dinners and hotels and all this stuff. He's bribing people, essentially, to vote. Now, he can't do it in the first ballot because they're locked into me in the first ballot. But that's all I care about. That's all I care about. I only care about the first. We're not going for the second and third and fourth and fifth. Now, here's, here's what I say is his problem. I think we get that 1237, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And a lot of other people say. I figured, you know, they said if Trump gets 60 delegates in New York, that would be a big hit. That would be good. And if he got around 50% would be good. Anything over 50 would be amazing. Yeah. You have three people. Another, and, and you know, look, I have a Senate, I have a governor. They both are statistically, mathematically, and they're gone. They can't win. The only way they can win, it's like in Wall Street, they call it short sellers, right? In other words, when you bet against the world. I never liked people that go short because they're not optimistic people. I know so many short sellers, they're among the worst people you'll ever meet, almost as bad as the media. Not quite. Nobody is. I'm not even sure if Cruz is as bad as the media. But what happens is a short. So Cruz is a short sell. Kasich, I still don't get that. I don't know what he's one for 38. He won one. And if I if I campaigned there for two more days, I would have won Ohio. You know what happened? I was winning Florida big, and then I had a dirty poll. You know what a dirty poll is? A phony poll, because they put out phony polls. Happened to be by NBC. In my opinion, it was a phony poll. And I'll say my opinion. But I think it was a, it was a dirty, dirty poll. And I thought I was winning by like 18 points, 16 points. Then right before the election, I was going to go to Ohio, spend a couple of days there, and because I thought I had it made in Florida, the people of Florida know me. And all of a sudden I get this poll, which again, I didn't understand, but I didn't want to take a chance. And it had me up only six. Is that right, David? And David does. Great, great man, great man. I won't tell you what he's done, because some of you wouldn't like it, but most of you would, right? But, so what happened is, I get this poll, I said, ah, oh. so I cancel the Ohio thing because I had to win Florida. I figured, oh, man, this is really bad. I'm really crashing in Florida. I end up winning Florida in a landslide by like 20 points. 